Right, hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. You are not seeing things, that is the Astra behind me that we have just now finished doing the head gasket on. Today the Astra is back for some more work, um, however it's not related to the head gasket or the engine or anything to do with that. There is no issues with that, however whilst I was doing the head gasket job I did find something else that needs fixing um, and that is what we're doing today. I have in my hand a pair of sway bar end links or drop links or whatever you'd like to call them. Um, suspension components that link the sway bar to the strut of the uh, suspension. What I noticed whilst I was doing the timing on the engine is I had to jack the driver's side of the car up, take the wheel off, and I noticed that the drop link on the driver's side had completely snapped, completely sheared where it joins the sway bar. So we've got ourselves two brand new ones today. I'm obviously gonna do the passenger side whilst I'm doing the driver's side, just makes sense to change them in pairs. Nice and easy job, nice and straightforward. I figured I'd film it because I've actually never seen a drop link snap before, um, especially on a car that's not lowered. This is just a standard height car. I know you can put extra stress on them if you lower the car, uh, but this car isn't lowered, so I did find it strange. So I figured I'd pick the camera up, take you along with me, um, and we'll get these changed out for some nice, fresh, new ones. First thing we need to do is get the car jacked up, take the two front wheels off, and then we can get to work. So wheels are off, we are safely jacked up on axle stands as you can see under there. I'll show you the driver's side first because this is the main reason we're doing the job today. I'll see if you can spot it straight away. No? Ta-da! <laughs> this is the uh, drop link, it's attached to the strut right here and then it also attaches to the sway bar which is down there and you can see the ball joint is still inside the sway bar but the other end is completely sheared off. Uh, these things are plastic so they can break, uh, they become brittle and they can snap. This one has been on there for quite a while, you can feel the ball joint in the top is fairly loose um, so these things need a change in any way. Just so happens that this one on this side has snapped. I've gone ahead and checked everything else and everything else looks okay. Uh, chances are that this car probably hit a pothole or something. This was already weak, they just kind of sheared it off and that's what you ended up with. Everything else looks okay in here though, the brakes look good, tie rod ends look good, CV boots look good, spring and strut looks good. So uh, anything we've got to worry about is just this drop link on this side. And then if we come over to the passenger side, this side actually it all looks okay. We bought them in pairs so you might as well change it out whilst we're here. So this one's going to get changed out even though there's nothing wrong with it particularly. Uh, still pretty firm, still pretty stiff, nothing wrong with the ball joints but like I said we've got it so we'll change it. Now before I take any bolts off, I'm going to give the threads on the ball joints a mandatory wire brush and also a mandatory WD-40 just to free up any of the grime and dirt, make the nuts as easy to come off as they possibly can be. Now when it comes to removing drop links on your car, there's actually usually sort of two different orientations of ways that you are able to remove them. Luckily enough with the drop links that I'm using today, I've actually got both types so I can show you exactly what I mean by that. This is the brand new one that we're fitting today. As you can see on the ball joint where the bolt's gonna go, I don't know if you can see that, but there's actually flats machined into um, two sides of this. So that side and that side there's flats. That enables you to put a spanner on them to hold the ball joint still um, so that when you undo the nut, the ball joint doesn't just spin and spin and spin because if the threads are mangled up like they usually are rusted and corroded and stuff like that when you undo the nut it will hold on to the threads and the ball joint will just spin and spin and spin and spin and you'll never get the nut off so in this instance you'd be able to fit a spanner on the back of that right where those flats are and then you can undo the nut without the ball joint spinning so just as a demonstration this is sort of what i mean uh, this is how it'll be sitting on the car like that you'll have the sway bar or the strut in between there you've got the nut on there which i think is a 19 mil you come to try and undo the nut and the whole ball joint will just spin and it won't do anything so in this case they are always different sizes 16 mil open-ended spanner and you can slot that straight onto those flats hopefully you can see that and that allows you to um, hold the ball joint still then you can put another spanner on the nut and just undo the nut. However, on the Astra that we're currently working on, we actually have a different setup. Um, this is the ball joint at the top right here. As you can see, the nut on the top is a 19 mil. And then in the end of the threads, I don't know if you can see that, there is a hex shape and that is to fit an Allen key in. So these ones likely won't have the flats on the backside. However, you can use an Allen key or an Allen key socket 
and that will go straight in the end and then over that you can fit a 19 millimeter spanner at least it is in this case a 19 mil and that will go over the socket onto the nut you hold the allen key with a ratchet and then you can undo the bolt with this one uh, so you're holding the ball joint in place with this and undoing the nut with the spanner I hope I explained that right, I just wanted to share that in case you come across either one of these. I have never come across a different setup, although I haven't worked on every single car in the world, so there may be other ways of doing it, but these are the two most common ways that I've found that these will be set up. You'll either have flats on the back, or you'll have like an Allen key, or sometimes a Torx key in the, uh, the actual shaft of the bolt itself. I think that's enough waffling, I'm going to crack on and uh, get these things undone. So before I go ahead and remove the old ones, I just want to double check that the new ones are um, the same size. These were, what brand are these? These new ones are NK Pro. I don't know if they're a good brand or not, but um, that's what we've got. They come with a new nut, which is always nice. And then we've got, oh, I've never seen that before. These have got like see-through dust covers. Can you see that? This bit here, the rubber bit around there, it's usually black. Well, these ones are see-through, so you can actually see the grease and the ball joint inside there. That's quite cool. So I just want to come in here and compare the size. Just make sure... Hang on, let me just take my tools off there. I just want to compare that they are the correct height. So if we hold it about even at the top, we're about even at the bottom, as you can see. Pretty much spot on with that, so that's good. As you can probably tell, we have gone for plastic ones again. I know a lot of people will probably comment saying, why would you put plastic ones on there? Because the old plastic ones snapped. To be completely transparent, I didn't tell Tom to buy the metal ones, he's the one that ordered these. And before I could tell him to buy the metal ones, he'd already ordered this set right here. They should be fine. These ones actually look a lot more substantial than the ones that are on at the moment. They'll do for now. Now, plain and simply, just because I've got access to one, I'm going to try and take off at least the top nut. Um, I won't be able to get in there with this on the bottom one, but at least the top one, I'm going to try and do it with my uh, Draper Impact Gun. Usually, if they're not too bound up, this will take it off, um, so I figured it's worth a try. Nope. Right, old fashioned way it is. So the top one free, I'm now moved on to the bottom one. And as you can see, access is really not too great. Um, the ball joint actually faces the opposite way, so it faces towards the engine instead of pointing out towards, which makes it a lot more difficult. This is the setup I've got at the minute. You can see Allen key on the right, which is sitting inside the threads of the ball joint. And then I've got this long ratcheting uh, 19 mil on this side. I'm just holding the one on the right and then ratcheting up and down with the one on the left. Ah, there we go, there's the prize. All right, there we go, it's the old one and the new one, side by side. I just wanted to show you just one more time what I was talking about earlier with the two different types of drop links that you can get, um, or the two different ways that you can take them off. You can see side by side, this one, the old one, doesn't have those flats, whereas this one does have the flats. And this one doesn't have, hang on, this one has got that hex in the end, this one doesn't have a hex in the end, um, and they're the two different types. Now, the hex ones can round off. I don't know if you saw it in the footage, but the top one, um, the Allen key hole, actually started to round off a little bit. Very common. When, when they rust, the Allen key bolt hole um, becomes soft, and it corrodes away, and the Allen keys never really fit in there properly. You just have to be really careful when taking it off that you don't damage it. Um, I damaged it a little bit, but it's not the end of the world. I managed to get it out. So do look out for that if you've got this type. I much prefer the flat type and um, they just proved to be so much easier when installing and removing um, it's a much better design so if you can get yourself some with the flat they'll be a lot easier to take off if you have to change them in the future um, you won't have to worry about messing around with these hex things garbage I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side you ain't got to see me undo two more bolts um, and then I'll show you the damage to the other one because the other side is the one that's broken so Well, this is how the top ones just come out. Yeah, the ball joint came out separately. I don't know if you can see this, but the boot has been ripped for a while. 
Um, and as I pulled on the plastic part, it just sort of came away from the ball joint. So this thing was toast anyway. Um, definitely need to change them. This here is the plastic part. That's where the ball joint will sit inside there. I don't know if I can get it back in or not. Probably if I put it in the vise. It just popped out though, just went. I've just got to take the other end off now. Ta-da! <laughs> that is the broken drop link or sway bar end link, whatever you want to call it out came out in three pieces uh, this is the part you can see where it's sheared off right here which is supposed to be connected to that now i don't know the history of this car i don't know what happened i don't know whether they went over a speed bump or what i don't know what caused this but you can see the point of failure was right near the end now the plastic ones aren't brilliant i would recommend going for the metal ones these are probably just a really cheap sort of ebay kind of one and um, these ones look a little bit more substantial and a little bit better built so hopefully these ones will last at least a little bit longer they will seem to go through drop links like they're nothing so uh, no doubt we'll be changing these in the future again and hopefully we'll go with metal ones next time so all that's left to do is to get these fitted pretty much exactly reversal of how we took them off although this time we're just going to be holding uh, the ball joint still with a spanner These things are a lot easier to install than they are to take off just because the threads are all nice and clean when you put them back on. Obviously take the little red caps off as well. Get rid of them, they're just protectors for the whilst it's in the storage and travel. Just gonna slip it in. That little white piece is a piece of nylon and that locks onto the threads. Oh, that gives me light. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send the top one with the impact gun, I'm just going to send it home with this because I can. I'll just double check it with a spanner as well just to make sure it is tight. Yeah, yep. The bottom one I'm going to do with a spanner like I did before, so we'll just have two spanners like that and just do it up that way. Just checking that it's sturdy, feels good. No movement in the ball joints, no movement in the bolts. Wicked, happy with that. I've already done the driver's side one because access to this one's a little bit harder with the wall being here. So I thought I'd do this one first, get out of the way. There's that one, all nice and tight. Sturdy, no movement. Wicked. I usually tend to talk the wheels down to 120 newton meters. That's sort of like my go-to measurement for most cars anyway. Goodness me, it's just started to rain. Just as I was putting the uh, car back on the floor, the heavens have opened and it's just started to rain, if you can see that. There you go. Right, well, that is job done. That is the drop links changed. Let me just take my earphone out. Before I end the video, I do just want to have a quick chat about this car because um, I've been reading through the comments on the, the two head gasket videos that I've just now put up. Let me just close the door because I'm getting wet. Um, I was reading through the comments as I do and I don't know whether it was down to me not explaining things properly or people just assume things and, and judge, but that's just how YouTube seems to be. Let me give you some context as to this car and the head gasket repair and all of that stuff because I just want to clear a few things up just so that people don't keep going on and on and on about certain things. This car came to me from my best friend of 14 years, right? I see Tom all the time. This is not just like a random customer or a random person from down the road. This is my best friend's car. Um, so we're on the same wavelength. We know exactly what's going on. We've had, we spoke about it. Um, he wanted this car repaired and back on the road for as little money as possible. The head gasket needed change and there was no way around that. So I told him that I would fix it and I would get it up and running for him again um, for as little money as possible. Now we bought the head gasket kit, which was 45 quid. Um, and really didn't buy anything else that sort of came with everything that I needed and so I told him buy the kit I'll do it I can get some content out of it um, and he can get the car back on the road and working now first of all let's just point out that the car now runs and drives perfectly right there's no issues no loss of oil no loss of coolant no misfires the car runs lovely so what I set out to do with fixing the misfire 
has happened. It's now working. This car is now drivable. His wife can now drive the kids about without it misfiring and acting stupidly. So that was the first intention of this whole thing was just to get the car drivable, right? That's what people don't understand. Second thing is not everybody has hundreds of pounds to spend on a car, especially, I mean, what's this car? Six, 700 quid worth? Um, nobody wants to spend three, 400 quid on getting a head gasket done and getting all the timing belt changed and all that stuff. Although it would be ideal to do it and if it was my car, I would do that because it makes sense to do it. Some people just don't have that money laying around to be able to chuck it into such a cheap car that they just used to run about in. That's just kind of how it is. It was never intended to be a bodge job. I would have just stuck some head gasket repair fluid in the coolant or whatever and uh, done it that way. However, I took it apart properly. I cleaned everything up properly. I put a new head gasket in there and I also put it together properly. I've seen people say that I should be changing the oil. I've seen people say that I should change the coolant. Um, I do agree with that. I have told Tom that the oil needs changing ASAP. Um, so I actually plan to do that next week today is Friday um, so sometime next week whenever the car is available I will be doing an oil change on it so that is something I planned on doing because this car hasn't had an oil change for a long time anyway uh, so it does need doing regardless of whether I've done the head gasket or not so there's something that's gonna happen I may video it I may not if not I'll take some pictures of it and put it on Instagram um, I don't like to moan and I don't like to point out people that um, target certain things but YouTube is just that sort of space especially in the car fixing community that's why i went away from doing how-to videos although even though today's video is sort of like a how-to um i've gone away from doing like engine how-to stuff i just film what i do um and i don't tell people that this is where you should do it i just say this is what i'm doing if people learn things and they learn stuff um, i don't want to teach people wrongdoings particularly so don't do as i say there's plenty of other videos um, of people who are actually qualified mechanics and technicians that do the job sort of perfectly uh, if you want to know how to do it perfectly go ahead and watch them uh, i just am a self-taught diy mechanic on my driveway and to be honest so far doing head gaskets i've done four or five of them now i've had a hundred percent success rate uh, the mini that car right there had a head gasket i did that properly where i changed the oil uh, just got the head skimmed checked did all that stuff if you want to see how it's done reasonably properly Go and watch the Mini Project Series or go and watch the Astra Mark IV Project Series, uh, which is also one of my cars, which now runs fine. The Mini's ran fine for ages. Um, so I've had 100% success rate with head gaskets and this one, so far, fingers crossed, doesn't seem to be any different. So I just want you guys to know that I am, I'm not a mechanic. I don't do this for a job. This is not my job. I don't work on cars for a job. This is just something that I enjoy to do. And if I can help out my friends to save them some cash, this job would have been probably around four five hundred quid if you want to get all that work done timing belt all that stuff in a garage maybe even more than that so i've saved them a good four five hundred pounds anyway uh, by doing it myself and the car is now as i said usable i think i'm going to end it there but otherwise i'm going to go out on a, a tyrant of all different subjects just understand that every job i do is not going to be to the manual um, i'm not a technician or anything like that so nothing is going to be done to the word in a manual when you watch my channel just expect to see that in the future don't expect to see jobs done 100 percent perfectly because that's just not going to happen over here i do my best and all the cars that i've worked on so far work still so <laughs> we'll just go we'll just put it there i hope you guys enjoyed this little video i know it wasn't anything too exciting but it was a job that needed doing the astra is now going to go back to tom tonight i believe he's going to come pick it up or i'll take it to him or whatever um, and this car will be out of my hair until the oil change next week like I said, I may film that, I may not. If you did enjoy the head gasket videos, I, I appreciate all the nice comments. I don't want to ignore them either. There was a lot of people saying, you know, you did a cracking job, well done, all that sort of stuff. I do appreciate all that. Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.